Hello everyone, welcome to a new reviews video tutorial. My name is Juan, I am an economist and I submit videos about applied time series analysis and forecasting. So if that is a topic that you are interested in, please feel free to subscribe to my channel to get a notification anytime I submit a new video. In this case, we're going to be talking about multicollinearity, which is one of the violation of the OLS assumptions. Um, I had submitted in the past a video where I explained how to estimate a linear regression. In that case, the example was about Argentina's GDP explained by the variation of Brazil's GDP. That was a spurious regression. We didn't do much of the, of the post-estimation analysis. So in this case, we're going to start working towards that end, towards analyzing what are some of the aspects that we need to check after estimating a linear regression. So let's move forward then with multicollinearity. Before we proceed with the explanation, please note that there is a link in the description of the video where you can download the data set to replicate the results. Also, there is an option in case you wish to buy the material of this video. It's going to contain the slides and also a detailed PDF with clear instructions of all the different things that we're going to be talking about today. Now let's begin. What is multicollinearity? Well, multicollinearity occurs when there is more than one regressor in a regression and the independent variables in the model are highly correlated. This can create many problems in regression analysis because it can make it challenging to isolate the individual effect of each independent variable on the dependent variable. So I'm just going to give you an example to be able to illustrate a bit better what we are trying to say with multicollinearity. So now suppose that you like to play golf, or it can be any other sport, of course, but let's keep it with golf for now. And suppose you are attempting to explain what is the distance of your golf driver, and you want to explain the distance of your driver using weight and strength as explanatory variables. Now what you should know is that weight and strength are likely to be correlated. This means that if, if you have a higher weight, it's likely that you have more strength than someone who is very thin or very light in weight. So this is going to make it very challenging to isolate the individual effects of each regressor. It's going to be very difficult to know exactly how much weight is contributing and how much strength is contributing to the distance of your golf driver because weight and strength are highly correlated. If you are heavier, likely you are going to have more strength. So it's going to be, again, very difficult to isolate the individual effects. Now, let's see the algebra. What, what would be a case of multicollinearity? Well, in a case of multicollinearity, Brazil wouldn't really be an independent variable, but you can see that in the presence of multicollinearity, Brazil is going to depend to some extent uh, of soy and of corn prices. Similarly, soy, in the presence of multicollinearity, it could depend on Brazil and the price of corn, and the corn, in the presence of multicollinearity, would depend on, the, on Brazil's GDP and the price of soy. So in these cases, alpha would be the correlation coefficient between uh, x1 and x2. This is the explanatory variables, soy and corn. And uh, this is, would be uh, the error term in the linear relationship. Now, it's very important to understand that in these scenarios, Brazil or the price of soy or the price of corn are not really independent, but um, indeed they do depend on the rest of the explanatory variables. So this would be a case of multicollinearity. Now let's talk a bit more about the issue. I already gave you some ideas, but let's illustrate a bit further. This was the regression. Argentina GDP is explained by a constant, by the GDP of Brazil, the price of soy, and the price of corn. We also have an error term. So in the presence of multicollinearity, we cannot rely on the coefficients beta 1 and beta 2 and beta 3 because it's going to become very challenging to determine how much of the variance in y, this is in Argentina's GDP, is explained by Brazil's GDP, the price of soy, and the price of corn. 
also you should know that it can produce higher standard errors which is going to produce is going to make some uh, coefficients appear statistically insignificant when they are in fact significant and the opposite is true you can have some coefficients that appear significant when in fact they are not now let's talk about how to detect multicollinearity we're going to be using the variance inflation factor if you use is going to produce two values the uncentered VIF and center VIF and center VIF is only applicable when we are estimating a regression and we don't include a constant term so if you don't include a constant term EVUS is only going to produce the uncentered VIF. Now, what is this value? It's the ratio of the variance of the coefficient estimate from the original equation divided by the variance from a coefficient estimate from an equation with only one regressor and no constant. As a ratio, these values are going to be high and difficult to interpret, and there are no really rule of thumbs here. So we're not really going to be using the uncentered VIF any time that we have the center beef. We're only going to be using the center beef unless we're in the case where we are not including a constant term in the regression. Now let's move into the BIF that we are always going to be using any time that is available and is the center BIF. So to detect multicollinearity, we will mostly rely on the center BIF. This measures how much of the variance of the estimated coefficient is increased due to multicollinearity. A very high VIF, usually greater than 10, is going to indicate a problematic level of multicollinearity. The way we are going to calculate the VIF is doing the following math uh, equation, which is 1 over 1 minus the R squared of the explanatory variable. Now here are some rule of thumbs. If the VIF value is equal to one, there's not going to be multicollinearity. Now, if the values are between two and five, there is going to be very low evidence of multicollinearity. However, if this value is between five or 10, or even bigger than 10, it can be any values, 20, 30, 40, whatever, this is going to be indicating really strong multicollinearity. We're going to be having a very strong issue in here. So this is something that now we have to test for. So let's move into EVUS and I'm going to show you how to calculate the variance inflation factors. I am in EVUS. Remember that you can download the data set so you can replicate the content. In this case, we have Argentina's GDP, Brazil GDP, the price of corn and the price of soy. We're going to create some transformations. Let's generate. I'm going to type here, generate uh, the variable, for example, LARG for Argentina in logs. Now we can do the same for Brazil. And let's obtain the price of corn and the price of soy in logs as well. Now that we have transformed our variables into logs, we can run the linear regression. We are going to type ls, which stands for least square, and we are going to type Argentina in logs, a constant, we are going to add Brazil in logs, the price of corn in logs, and the price of soy in logs. We are going to hit enter, and here we get the equations. At first glance, we can see that both the GDP of Brazil and the price of soy have a positive effect on the GDP of Argentina. This is when the price of soy increases or the GDP of Brazil increases, then Argentina's GDP is going to increase. We can see that the price of corn has a negative effect. However, be aware that both the price of corn and soy don't seem to be statistically significant. This is according to the individual significance test. Including corn and soy is not very appropriate in this type of model, but we're not here going to end the analysis here. The idea is that we can check whether there is multicollinearity in the explanatory variables. So 
Furthermore, I want to clarify this seems to be right away a spurious regression because these variables are not stationary, the R square is very high, there seems to be um, autocorrelation. So we're going to just for now in this example, we're going to work in how to detect multicollinearity and in the coming videos, we'll keep expanding on how to fix this linear regression. But let's move first with multicollinearity. To get the variance inflation factors, we're going to go into view. We're going to go into coefficient diagnostics and we're going to hit on variance inflation factors. Now here, as I mentioned, EViews is going to produce the uncentered uh, BIF and the centered VIF. Remember that values between two and five were indicating very, um, very small multicollinearity, whereas values bigger than five or even 10, according to some textbooks, it indicates high levels of multicollinearity. So in this case, the price of corn and the price of soy both are uh, showing multicollinearity, but Brazil is not. In other words, Brazil presents no multicollinearity with the price of corn and the price of soy, but the price of corn does show multicollinearity between Brazil GDP and the price of soy, and the price of soy also is showing high levels of multicollinearity between uh, Brazil's GDP and the price of corn. So according to these results, we should not include in the same regression the price of corn and the price of soy together because they are going to be highly correlated. In other words, if you think about this example, it does make sense that the prices of commodities are going to be highly correlated, especially when it comes to crops, corn, soy, wheat, any other type of commodities of that characteristic they are going to be highly correlated. Normally, if one increase, they will all increase, and when one decreases, they will all decrease. This is not always true. It will depend on other factors as weather and other stuff, but generally speaking, they will be highly correlated. Let's move back into the slides because I'm going to show you how to manually calculate this value so you understand how EViews is going to obtain these BIF values. So if we wish to obtain the VIF values of the variable, for example, Brazil, we're going to regress Brazil on the rest of the explanatory variables. This is on corn and soy prices. So we're going to estimate the following regression. We're going to run Brazil explained by the price of soy and corn. In the command window, we're going to type least square. Now we're going to type Brazil, a constant, and the price of corn and the price of soy. I'm going to hit enter and here we get the regression output. Now we're going to copy the R squared because this is the value that we are going to need for our formula. So let's go now back into the slides and we're going to calculate this. As I mentioned, you're going to copy the R squared and now to calculate the BIF, remember it, the formula was 1 over 1 minus the R squared. We paste the R squared this was the value, and we are going to get 2.935534. Now, if we recall, I, I pasted here the variance inflation factors results, and you can see that the value is the same. So this is the way that we're going to calculate manually the uh, center BIF. And it's very helpful for you to see this because then you get an idea of how EViews is calculating these values. Now, as a homework, download the data set, please, and estimate the linear regressions for corn and soy and obtain the BIF values. So do the same and see if you can get to 11.66 and to 13.88. Now let's talk about how to fix multicollinearity. As you can initially guess, the easiest practice to remove multicollinearity is getting rid of one of the variables that are highly correlated. In this case, we had corn and soy were highly correlated. We're gonna get rid of one of them. Some other practice can include creating an index, for example, a commodity index, which would include corn and soy together. Instead of having, for example, corn as explanatory variable, soy as an explanatory variable, the price of wheat as an explanatory variable, we would just have like a commodity index. So that's another of the practices that can be done. Let's move into views, and I'm going to show you if maybe getting rid of one of the variables either corn or soy are going to fix multicollinearity. Back in eViews, I'm going to run the following regression. We're going to do 
um, Argentina, a constant, and we're going to add Brazil, and let's add the price of corn. So here we get the estimation output, and let's go to the variance inflation factor, coefficient diagnostics, variance inflation factors, and now you can see that these variables are not highly correlated. Getting rid of the price of soy made the value, the center VAF, for the price of corn to go down. You can see that Brazil GDP and the price of corn are not really highly correlated. There's no real signs of high multicollinearity as this value is below 5. So this is one of the ways that you can try to test for multicollinearity. You now understand how to obtain the variance inflation factor values and you also understand how you can handle multicollinearity. I hope that you found this video useful and remember, download the data set, subscribe to my channel for more content like this one. Please feel free to um, leave your comments if you have any questions and share it with your friends as well. Share it with your friends the video. And remember, uh, in the description of the video, there is a link where you can buy, if you're interested, the, um, the slides and a PDF guide with step-by-step -step explanations, not only about uh, multicollinearity, but it's going to include the explanation for homoscedasticity, autocorrelation, um, and so many other violations of the OLS assumptions. So thank you very much for watching and take care.